All right, thanks for staying with us now. Referencing the Naira metrics oil theft in Nigeria ranges from um, small scale to large scale, depending on the port of uh, oil station. Now, the of course, the port of station, the size of pipeline, and people involved, amongst other factors. Now, oil theft, also known as illegal bunkering, is not a new menace in the oil and gas sector. It um, dates back over two decades ago now this system involves a large chain of individuals which includes security operatives and individuals from all walks of life all having different roles to play so with 200,000 barrels stolen every day and having lost one billion dollars in the first quarter of 2022 the nigerian oil theft market has continued to boom now, in 2020, Nigeria lost 15.71 billion worth of crude oil. This number skyrocketed to a whopping 1.67 trillion in 2021. Now, this continues to have a negative impact on the economy. And today we're asking, is it even possible? Can oil theft <coughs> be stopped in Nigeria? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 eight zero three eight four six six three you can also tweet at us at we show africa one with the hashtag we show i think we have a video right the asari dokubo's video um if we can just probably see that video then we'll come back to the conversation Just to come and say hello to my father. I've congratulated him before this time and to give a word of support for what he has achieved and what he has done so far. And I know that Nigeria had changed. Nigeria had turned 360 degrees in the positive direction. The, when, when I'm speaking about the president, I'm speaking from a personal point of view. I will do everything, I can stake everything to make my father, in quote, succeed. And that is a promise I've given to myself and a promise I've given to him. Oil theft will be stopped. There will be zero oil theft in the Niger Delta. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Mm. It is well, it is well. <laughs> Where do I will start from? For this oil theft issue. Um, so there's a, there's a report on, uh, I think it was Punch, right, that said that he alleged that um, the bulk cases of oil theft recorded, that's um, Asari Dokubo, mm -hmm. the bulk cases of oil theft recorded in the oil-rich region are traceable to the Nigerian army and navy. It says the military is at the center of oil theft. Mm -hmm. And we have to make this very clear to the Nigerian public that 99% of oil theft can be traced to the Nigerian military uh, and the army the Navy especially. Hmm. So he said this. That however is pledging his support to the federal government to bring oil theft to zero. You know Toxi cut it by 20%. <laughs> Believing that the Tinubu led administration would fish out the culpable elements in the military. You know, I'm happy that this is coming from Asari Dokubo. He's not a regular Nigerian because if he's an everyday Nigerian now, maybe by now DSS will be waiting for me <laughs> in, my, in my doorstep after making that kind of statement. But these are strong allegations. But it's not actually new. 
because we have always said it that I always we always reference um, the quote by Abacha that said that if insurgency or whatever, right, it goes beyond 24 hours. Just know that the hand of the government is involved. Like if it lasts beyond 24 hours, know that there is some level of backing, you know, from the government for it to continue to linger. And this case of oil theft, I don't know if you saw that video where one man went into a vessel, was trying to give us a pictorial, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, a pictorial narration of what a vessel looks like and what oil, you know, every, all the process. And he was explaining how it is impossible, you know, for this massive thing to say, oh, it was, so how? Do you understand? Mm. Because even going on, on that uh, water and everything, there are military presence, Navy especially, right? So how is it possible that you would um, wake up and say that this is not, we're not talking about a cup of crude, crude. right? I'm not talking about a 25 liter cake. From that research, it says over 200 thousand so for you to be able to even move that much quantity right there has to be somebody that is making sure that they are turning a blind eye so that whatever kicks back kickbacks they are getting you know a steady flow so is it even possible for us to stop it in nigeria with the rate at which it has gone how it has grown i don't even know what to say I would like to be optimistic to say, you know what? Eh, okay, since the president is talking tough. But this talking tough matter, not be today we start to hear it. Because they have been talking tough for a while. But at the end of the day, you don't see anything happening. Because the mouth that this bunk this bunkery or this theft is feeding is quite wide. So if you catch me, I sing like a canary. And at the end of the day, it will pass, 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 mm -hmm. pass, and probably come back to you. So that's why it's impossible to catch because you can. It's a, it's a slippery slope. You can you can't catch somebody and not indict a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. So that's why I'm saying that when they are talking tough and saying oh it can be ended and all of that, I'm wondering is it possible? I don't think so. But let me hear your thoughts. Um, <clears throat> that was I read um, through his statement. That was a very strong, I don't know if to say allegation, for someone to say 99%, and that's what I read, about 99% of the theft is caused by... It's traced. It's traced, yes, to the military and Navy. The Army as and, well. Yeah. So, again, like you just said, we need to move past the point where all these vague statements, like there's no, you're not hitting anything, like you're just talking you're not hitting we don't have anything to hold on to Oga. okay you have information okay maybe it's classified so if it's classified information you're not willing to divulge everything why like raise people's increase it increase what's that increase inquisitiveness <laughs> yes. right so because now i'm curious to for you to come and say about 99 because that's very strong so before we think maybe it's a syndicate maybe is it but when you come to say that that's literally saying the government is hundred if you say 99 percent that's like saying 100 percent involved in this mm. so before coming out why don't you even put out names or maybe we are not um we should not have access to such so why don't you maybe do your underground so first we should move past so you want more details more details that's back number one with that back time, back it up with names. and that's one thing i want to really this new administration that's one let's move past that Vic, always so coming out with vague news, always talking. Then you're also saying you will bring it to zero, like it's just that easy. It's possible <laughs> that it's easy, but you know what? Let's go on a very quick break. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, right? If you have any, if if you believe what Asari Dokubo has said, you know, let us know. And also, if you have, if you have faith that it's possible to curb oil theft in Nigeria, let us know. Then probably tell us how you think it's possible. We'll do all of that. We'll take your comments when we come back from the break. Stay with us.
all right thanks for staying with us now if you just tuned in we're discussing the topic can oil theft be stopped in nigeria now please let's hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation send us an sms or whatsapp to the one a038 you can also tweet at us at way show africa one with the hashtag way show i wish we had an open house today where we could take phone calls but it's not mm -hmm. our it's not our open com it's not a, a calling day but on a serious note right um I've said this thing several times i don't even know how to say it and and i would like for us to see some level of transparency with our government right um they say talk is cheap, cheap yes. right what we need are you know like really really measurable actions to say okay these are the actions that we've put in place the former president in this country a former president is going to come out to say that boko haram was being sponsored by top government officials right we've heard different cases around even the issues around the lingering um, crisis and all of that both even with the um, with, with um, different regions you know how they come and they tell you that the hand of the government is involved and if you speaking truth to it right if somebody's not turning a blind eye right certain things will not happen in the the magnitude at which is happening I mean, so we had a conversation with um, a, a, a lady that is very vast in the oil and gas industry today at my office, and we were talking extensively in the industry and how, uh, for instance, petrol is being moved from Nigeria to other parts of the country because people were wondering what's happening with um, what's happening with uh, what's it called Cameroon? What, why were they protesting Protest. our uh, subsidy true. removal and all of that? It's because again, over the years. People take this product and they take it to neighboring countries, right? And they're able to make so much profit. Because I was, I kept on asking that why can't we determine the not the consumption of um, fuel in Nigeria on a daily basis? He said it's impossible because when they ship in this product, right? First of all, we're not even sure of the quantity that was shipped because then there was subsidy, so they they would always hike whatever whatever it is that they're shipping mm. so that they can get more um, was kickback um, was the cashback from the government based on subsidy. That's on one hand. Secondly, is they can't even give you the number. So let's even say, okay, they shipped in 100 million liters. They cannot tell you the consumption on a daily basis within Nigeria because that 100 million liters, you can bet it that maybe about 30% of that or even 50% of that will go to other neighboring countries where they make more money. Because again, remember the price is different mm -hmm. in those parts. So I remember going to Benin Republic, right? One, many years ago. I remember going to Benin Republic. In fact, I did all the works. What was I thinking? Because I actually did the way they would do um, the, you go on a bike, you stop, you get, get, get to a point mm. where you use a car, then you go on a bike. It was wow ridiculous. But the guy is Benenoir. So he was saying that he can take me in, can take me in, you know. Just, you just needed to get me a visa and I'll go to where I'm going or something. But hey, it was God that delivered me. But I remember that I, I, I was paying attention to what I was seeing in Benin Republic. First of all, they have those kind of cars that they have done something to the back of the cars where it's, ha it's really elevated, mm -hmm. where they can now take in a lot of heavy loads. Most of those cars are used to smuggle petroleum products into Benin Republic. Then, what I didn't notice, even within their water, you saw kegs. You just see a, um, like a, bo a boat, right? Or a cane or whatever, loaded with kegs. I kept on asking what are those things right in my head i was thinking maybe they're palm wine or maybe palm oil or something i said no those are petrol that's how they ship in petrol into benin republic right so these are like small scale yet me could see them so when somebody now decides to steal a, an entire vessel or like you know in huge quantity right it's not it's not possible now those guys mind you there are checkpoints where they pass police people and they just give them their bribes and they move on. Do you understand? They don't mm -hmm. stop them. These are the yes. local level. Mm -hmm. Now imagine what the bribery and the level of what's it called cash that is being exchanged for I those kinds of levels. quantity of oil that is being stolen. It is obscene. Many years ago, a young man had graduated from NDA, Nigerian Defense Academy, right? And from nowhere, he was posted to President Jonathan's um, home country, or the home state. Yeah. Assigned to the president, um, he was part of the detailing and all of that. And all that. At some point, they now moved him. So in their mind, posting in the army 
right? Because he's in the army. To those kinds of borders where they do like um, um, create um, what's it called oil regions and all of that, where they post them to all those borders, it is like you are posting them to the juiciest positions. Because this boy from zero, all of a sudden started having so much money. Where was the money coming? And he was honest enough to tell us that this was it. Oh. Do you understand that? Do you know that on just one transaction, one thing, that is somebody that just graduated. Now imagine what the military chiefs, the, the like top ranking officers are taking back. So if I ask the question, can oil theft be curbed? Mm -hmm. Or according to Asari Dokubo, that you can bring it to ground zero. zero. A lot of people have to be jailed. Some people have to go down for it in terms of like literally leaving this planet Earth for it. Because it's not going to be an easy fight. So is the president willing to do that? Do you understand? Yeah. Will he be willing to jail people? Will he be willing to, what's it called? E like execute people safe in all of these things. Will he be willing to go and say, you know what? For every penny that has been stolen, we'll seize all your assets, take it over, try to recoup our money. Is, is the president ready? Because now, from what Asari Dokubo said, because me, I'm, I'm trying to go back to Asari Dokubo. Yeah. Since we have, a, we have a, an anchor for it. He said that the president, if he's willing to fish them out, he can fish them out. So does this now tell you that over the years, the reason oil theft has lingered is because the people in authority not have really. not just had the willpower to stop it. So what would then make this administration different? From <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Like you rightly Rest. said, this, this is like a chain reaction. So if people or if this administration is willing to do the needful to stop this or curb this, let me start by saying first, it can actually be curbed. I don't think most of these things can actually be curbed, but it is, it's, it's a matter of willingness. The people in authority, are they willing to go all the way? Because so many people are involved in this and like you said so many people will go down and are they willing to take that step mm. aside the government too even the people um most of these multinational companies involved in all the drilling and all of that they also have a rest so i think it's a combination of different factors working together almost simultaneously the government mm. you know implementing measures and making sure that whosoever is it's caught or whosoever has been involved in this is prosecuted and the needful is done and also some of these companies that are involved in all uh, for example i don't know um shell i think some of these companies involved in this you know having csr so again yeah wait, so I think, no, that's not be csr matter now uh, no no <laughs> it, it has a, a role to play because so, so csr right yeah. would only cater to for instance community development and engagement to make sure that the, the host communities are doing well okay if you want to look at the real origination of this if you go back to history the real origination was it was mostly promoted because people felt like these people are taking their resources there is no be, even till now people still have that complaint they always spillage and all of that so people still have and they say okay since you're destroying our environment and we're not seeing the benefits so let's so it's because they, you can't really not do this without involving the locals mm. and how do you take how do you take their minds off it it's when you implement a social development so you do you think that it's actually the locals that are stealing this oil? Not just them alone. That's why I said it's a combination of different that, things. You know that together. they're actually those um, they call them modular refineries, right? Yeah. Where where the locals you see. So even the locals, the kind of oil they steal is not is not to the extent of the quantity that we have. You know, with this particular one that we're losing billions of dollars, right? So I get you, and you're hundred percent correct. You know, I'm only saying that. <laughs> It's, it's beyond, because now, and I'll tell you for free, anybody coming into your country, right, to say I want to come and do, if I come to you now and I want to do business with you, I'm finding a way to make sure that I milk every opportunity that I get to make more profit and more money. Do you understand? So you'll be shocked that by the time they truly, if the president listens to Asari Dokubo's counsel, 
and it starts to truly fish out these people you might be shocked that these same people that you're talking about might be fully involved you know in the in the movement because of course it's free it's cheap this thing the diamonds in south africa you know the ones that they call blood diamond how did they how did that name come about you know people's lives you know so even with we are talking about oil Mm -hmm. We've not even touched our mineral resources, our mines, how it, we have been exploited. These are companies that come in and they say they want to do it, but they take advantage of the fact that we do not have a process. So where I'm going with this is, I feel it is beyond you coming on air and saying that the president knows these people, the military, the this, the that is involved. What exactly would would um, the fight for? to stop oil theft look like to me as a Nigerian. I don't know about any other person. I, what, I, I keep saying this thing, maybe one day we'll play that video. The video of Dubai, right? I think it was the oil minister, showing us how they monitor the oil. They are big screens everywhere, it's like a situation room. Technology. Te okay, we're going there. <laughs> so where you are actually like from, the, from when it is explored, brought out from the ground, and how it passes through and refined and everything, they follow the litter to the very drop. Do you get what I'm saying? So if our president says he wants to curb um, or uh, end oil theft, right. first of all, what, who are the people that he's talking to in terms of, what's it called now, in terms of engagement to deploy technology? Secondly, you cannot command the, the people that have been accused now as thieves because the story I took, I think, about two or three weeks ago when the, the, the president commanded the service chiefs to go and end oil theft. Now, Asali Dokuba is coming out today to say that oil theft is strongly tied to the same military, navy, and army. The same people you sent. So it's like I have stolen the cheese. You are not telling me to go and bring, make sure that the cheese is not stolen. So I don't understand how it will make sense. So for me, I think, yes, oil theft can be stopped. But if you really want to stop oil theft, first of all, go to the economies that have gotten it right. How, what are the technologies? It's just, and the truth about life now with this age, the way we did, you don't need to go and reinvent the wheel. All you need to do, as, as far as I am concerned, go and study a model. This model, what did it cost for you people to get to where it is? replicate that model bam and drop it where you are do you understand mm -hmm. that will it will tell me okay yes now we're beginning to head somewhere so we are taking out subsidies right mm -hmm. the money or the whatever income that is generated from those subsidies how can we channel that into deploying technology to ensure that every barrel is monitored or every liter is monitored and nothing is stolen when you do that it tells me that you are ready but as long as we continue the rhetoric and we continue as business as usual, it is impossible for us to stop oil theft at the way we are going. We must be very honest and sincere with ourselves. But don't because you, think you know that why? Talking tough, we've seen it. You and I, in our lifetime, we have seen that talking tough in Nigeria mm -hmm. is just, they call it initial gragra. It doesn't change anything. Go ahead. Um, so I'll just... I'm um, thinking I, it's more or less a question. So with the removal of subsidy, isn't it going to make crude oil, um, I think they call it bunkery, right? Mm. More attractive in terms of the prices and all that, making it more difficult to even curb it at this point? So now I don't even know how to tie that question to, because I, from my understanding, subsidy was done for people that import finished products Product. into mm -hmm. the country. Right. So, for instance, so I am a, I, I'm an oil uh, marketer or whatever, and I say, you know what? Every month, I have to import 10 million liters of petrol into Nigeria to sell to the Nigerian market. Right. So, whether I import 10 million liters in true sense or not, hear me, I get paid a subsidy for that 10 million liters. So, what has happened with subsidy over the years is that people were just collecting. Money. money whether they brought it in or not somebody was covering up for them and, and approving that yes they actually checked and they saw that they brought in 10 million liters so there's a lot of exchange of you know greasing of pounds within oh, yeah. that value chain right so subsidy removal i don't really see how it impacts 
the crude. The, the, the crude. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because the only thing I can say is that most of these people, I, I understand that most of these people that, that uh, what's it called, um, steal crude, they actually steal it in exchange for finished product with the name eventually. So it is just. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a mess. A <laughs> it's a mess. Yes. But honestly speaking, I want to beg the president and you know his advisors. I am tired of talking. Don't talk tough. Action. Action. Right? Yeah. Anybody that wants to kill some things, you know, you know, it's very easy. Like for instance, if you start a paperless transaction, right? Um, if you start a paperless transaction, it is difficult for um, corruption to happen. There's a particular gym that is now everywhere. Mm -hmm. They have huge franchise every, everywhere you go there in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They are really, really expanding. The first day I walked into that gym and I wanted to register, they told me there's no cash. Everything was done virtually. So you see the people that are there, right? They only have to get creative to earn money, mm -hmm. right? That is not touching the bottom line of the, the business owner. So they now have to bring in like, uh, what's it called? Tutors, like um, private trainers, fitness trainers and all that. Don't tell you, okay, you know, I can give you private lessons and all of those things. You know, if you pay um, with a private tutor for the gym, this is the cost. But if you come, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. arrangement, I can give you a discount. That's the only way. But in terms of like using the gym and all of those things and most of the things within the facility, it's all automated. So the only thing I am afraid of, because this is part of the conversation I had with the lady that came in my office today, was how would the deploring of technology impact the cost of the production? I think all of these things, Glory, if the, if the, if the government is sincere, this is not a time to use this thing touches the very core of everybody Every, yes so if at all you are used to collecting kickbacks or you are used to like inflating things because i asked that person today i say how much does a little land this country let's even know let's not go by nnpc's thing so if i go now i say i want to go and buy xyz number of barrels or maybe a a, 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 a one ton whatever um, shipment into Nigeria if I clear it if I do everything and all of those things how much is the landing cost nobody has been able to give me that answer do you understand yeah. because if I know the landing cost I know that at the end of the day regardless of whatever it is by the time they put their profit and their mark up I will I will be okay it will not be too heavy on me so with this petroleum industry especially for PMS the government have to like strip every you know every cobweb and just make it a very transparent and clean process and let's start to see what exactly it is that we have no and what data, we're paying for the we data in adequate back data, it up with data not... back it up with technology let's see all of those things you know today is just a long day for talk but <laughs> i'm not tired do we have comments yes we do quickly um this is Okay, no name. Um, Asari Dokubo is seeking favor, relevance in President Tinubu's administration. Why is he not mentioning names? Is he free from that allegation? Okay, this is because, normal from our Because state. people That's have what also, as, uh, uh, um, what's it called, have also accused the same Sim Asari yes, Dokubo sir, yeah. that he is the one vandalizing those pipelines so that the government can come back and employ him to, to protect it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's just a messy thing. And that's why I'm saying that. For us, if you as a government, you're not ready to go and engage technology drivers, it is impossible for us to grow. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It is impossible for oil theft to be stopped until you are ready. And don't tell me uh, it will end or it will mm -hmm. kill it. Will, I mean, no. enough of the too much talking. Thank Let's you. just see the actions. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so good evening, my dear beautiful sisters, or what are you saying? Can oil theft be stopped in Nigeria? I think enough is enough. He says, my dear beautiful sister, who made mention of the people being jailed for oil theft and made to face the music, which I agree. Some people make illegal wealth through oil theft. Some things, um, so, something has to be done to stop oil theft in Nigeria. If we are really, really serious to move the country forward, people are being encouraged to smuggle oil 
um, out without thorough investigation and monitoring. Um, this is deadly and dangerous. My name is Daniel Edo. Thank you, Ways regular fan. <laughs> I mean, thank you so much. But today has been an interesting conversation. It's just to have, like, you know, it's me and Glory in the studio today. That's why she made me talk too much. Ah. <laughs> Well, hey, we have to revisit that penis matter. Chai. Oh. I have to go back. That story is... <laughs> Naji, uh, 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 let me just say, let me put out a disclaimer out there. All our technical guys uh, at the back end, they say they disagree they with disagree. us. disagree. <laughs> but hey, it's not Justice about the size of the Nigeria. penis, trust me. Once uh, the person knows how to use it well. So, Nigeria, can we stop oil theft? I'm not so sure. But honestly speaking, I think for everything that is bad to end in this country, it just takes willpower. Once there's willpower, we'll see results. We're hopeful. I'm actually optimistic that Nigeria will do better, hopefully. Well, that's all we got. We have just hope. to be hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Glory. I think this was good. Even though you made me talk too much. Mm. All right. So before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Waysho Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop your comments and share your thoughts and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. So if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. It says, the military is at the center of oil theft and we have to make this very clear to the Nigerian public that 99% of oil theft can be traced. This is very strong That's what to I'm Nigerian so military, strong. the army, the navy especially ha this was from asari doku boys not oh wow so don't come for me <laughs> we'll see you guys on monday at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen ciao